Okay, what's going on guys? We're going to go over the best settings to use and updated one because a few things has changed now since the game's been come out for like four months and also those that got the game new on Christmas. This will help you get up to date to know what's the best settings to use on what each thing does. Now the first thing you want to do is to get to settings. You want to go to the main menu um, and click on the left hand side here like that. Click on the gear, go to settings and then you have the controls and you have game settings. Now, uh, don't forget as well if you want to join my Patreon series, SC24, want to get better. If you don't give up for one month, we'll refund your money as a no guys guarantee. Links down below in the description. Now, let's go straight into it. So, competitive. This is on like normal. Uh, if you're playing any of the rivals, any of the main online gamers like Foot Champs, this is going to be on. The biggest one I would say this year is Shot Assistance. Now, when the game came out, I recommended Assisted. Um, to be honest, finishing in this game is diabolical. Um, you'd miss a guaranteed one-on-one -on -one with the best player inside the game. It's not the player's fault, it's not, the, it's not your fault, it's the game's fault. Uh, it looks to me they're not changing anything. I would recommend Precision Shooter. Now, this is more an advanced level. If you're watching something new to the game, I would say use Assisted. But if you've been playing this game for some time and you find that you're struggling with 1v1 situations, try Shot Assistance. Go into a squad battles game if you're doing evolutions, practice uh, Precision Shooting then. But basically, you just have to aim a left analog stick and wherever you aim it is where the actual ball will go. But the benefit is that you do get faster ball speeds um, although accurate shots is important, the fastest ball speed is what helps to get past the goalkeeper's grasp is what I found. So I would definitely recommend precision shooting. Um, in my FC Patreon series, uh, my FIFA school series, FC school series, I'm still teaching on assisted for now, but there'll be a video on how to adapt to precision. But just to give you an example, you're not at a significant uh, disadvantage, but there is a major disadvantage to major sorry a major advantage using precision again if you're new to the game i wouldn't really recommend it i say maybe this is like if you're like a veteran of the game or you're like an elite player is what i'd recommend time finishing i think it's useful but the thing is with this year i think you're better off using precision than time i'll explain to you why because imagine this is the goal right now let's say for example you aim at this part of the post let's say this is a normal shot right a precision shot basically is just sorry a time shot is just basically it reduces the window of error of where the ball is going to be. So that is why a lot of players figure out that with green time shots, you miss the post or you might hit the post. So that's why people might feel that green time in a shot is actually less accurate than a normal shot. So that's why people get that, that feeling. What I'd recommend is using precision shooting on and leave time shooting off. That's the best way of practicing it. And once you get the hang of precision shooting, then you can introduce green time shooting. But I think precision shooting is what I'd recommend. Passing, um, semi, semi here, nothing's changed here. Assisted, there's no need to put it on um, semi. There's actually, realistically, there's no benefit here of using semi. Um, especially when you're under pressure, you're really going to struggle. Um, I'd recommend leave this on assisted all the time. But this is the one that can, can vary. If you're new to the game, leave it on assisted. If you're like an, a veteran player here, um, semi is important because let's say you're running down the wing. Let's say this is the goal. Um, if you apply a third of power, the ball will go near post. If you apply half power, the ball will go to the middle. And a lot of power, the ball will go to the far post if you press a square cross. So the semi, it, the benefit of this is it allows you to adjust how much power you apply to the cross. So if you press the square button and you hold the square button for longer, the cross will go further down. So if you if you do like to cross the ball, like to use those whipped crosses, especially with those play styles, definitely leave that on semi. Lob pass leaves on assisted. Uh, pass receiver lock you want to leave on late. Um, the best example I can give this to you is, let's say for example, if the ball arrives to your feet, and let's say you want to pass the ball to player A. When you make the pass to player A, if your opponent goes and cuts the passing lane out last minute, you can always change to person B, as long as the ball hasn't left your foot. So let's say I want to pass to one player, I'm about to pass a player A, but my opponent has then marked that passing lane, I can flick my left analog stick and change last minute to B. If you have this, for example, on, on for example, power up, it, wherever you're aiming, it locks it out with it when you power up your pass. Um, when you have it on animation stop, as soon as you press the shot, basically, sorry, not the shot, the pass, um, it's going to lock. So if you aim at player A, like I mentioned to you, and your opponent blocks the passing lane, that's it. You can't stop the pass. The pass is going to go there no matter what. Um, so that is why ideally you want to leave this on late. This is, there's no reason to leave on earlier. There's no actual benefit. Um, late is what you want to leave on. That way you can change your pass. This is why people's passes get intercepted a lot of the time because they use these two. But you want to be able to change it on the fly. If someone marking this angle, at least you can then pass to someone else. Um, precision pass sensitive. Now this one's actually uh, one I would say that's 
unlike normally, I normally suggest something. This is kind of depends on personal preference. I wouldn't go to um, high immediately. I'd recommend using normal um, and then just seeing how it is. Sometimes you may prefer high. High is more precise and it really relies on you to use your left analog stick. But that is where precision passing um, or precision shooting, should I say, also comes into play. Because if you're happy with precision with precision shooting, you know if you aim your left analog stick just a bit to the left, is actually going to go there? Then you can get away with using precision pass sensitivity. If you if you struggle with passing already, definitely this on normal because the game will assist you quite a lot. Yes, sometimes the ball might go to a player you don't want it to go because the game might assist you to go there. But with, but with precision pass sensitivity, you have to be very very accurate. So that's want to bear, bear that in mind. But again, that might be dependent. Now clearance, um, I would use directional. That way when you clear the ball, at least you have somewhat of a directional input. Like at least you can aim it like away from the goal if you want to, like to the corner flag. Or I don't know, wherever you want to aim it. But classic, it just kind of clears it um, wherever. So especially if you like, you know, you win the ball back. And let's say, for example, you want to clear it to like one of your strikers is up front. Directional is very good. Um, but if you normally panic quite a lot, you could use classic. So if you're new to the game, I would recommend classic. Anyone who's played the game for over two or three months, I definitely recommend directional. Now, tactical defender. This is probably the most important one. Uh, people always ask me. Um, the best analogy I gave is when the game came out. In fact, do you know what? Let me just. I just realised as well. Um, the reason why it's showing different controls is because my controls are, are set to normal. That's why if you went, if you saw time shooting, it should show, it should show the correct controls now. So if you got confused, like why was why was it circle instead of square? That's the reason why. But anyway, going back to um, tactical defending. When the game came out, the analogy I gave to everyone, and I think is the best way to do it, right? Let's say you learn to drive a car for the first time, okay? And let's say you're learning to drive an automatic car. And let's say you're already struggling, okay? Now, is it wise to go to manual? Imagine, imagine, you're, imagine your test is in like in three weeks' time, you're driving an automatic car, and you're already struggling to, to as it is, right? Imagine your instructor goes to you, Go to learn manual. You're going to think they're mad. So that is the whole thing. You know, people misunderstood what I said when the game came out. They kept thinking that I said advanced defending is not good because they don't really watch. Even other creators didn't understand what I was talking about. I'm not saying that advanced defending is not good. I'm just saying for the mass majority, you can use tactical defending. If anything, a lot of pro players still use tactical defending. People haven't changed. This is the thing. People think all the pros are using advanced defending. No, they are not. That's a complete lie. In fact, most probably are using tactical defending over advanced defending. Tactical defending, I'd recommend if you're new to the game. There's a lot more systems. The game decides when you can barge and the game decides when to tackle. The game is actually smart enough to do that for you. Is there benefits to using advanced defending? Yes, of course. It gives you that manual control. In fact, sometimes you can actually barge the player and you can guarantee you can do attempt to shoulder, challenge, all is seal out. You can guarantee it and that way the game won't screw you over. To be honest, rarely the game will ever screw you over if you're meant to be completely candid. It does give you more manual control. But remember the all logic I would say, if you're learning to, to defend, you learn the basics. This is why people don't get better at the game because they watch these videos, people learning mechanic abusing, learning this skill move, what's this, what's that, what's the most overpowered mechanic, and they never get better at the game. Maybe maybe creators want that because they want you to come back to the videos. I don't want you to come back to my videos in two years' time. You should not be watching Neil Guys. You'd be thinking, Neil Guys is the guy talking about play FC, and that's it. You never heard you never see my face again. That's how you want that's how you want it to go along. So yes, advanced defending is effective. You need to rely a lot on play styles as well, I think. But personally speaking, tactical defending is completely fine. Advanced defending just gives you the manual control when you can decide. So if you press the tackle button with advanced defending, you can guarantee a, a tackle. But this is the issue. Another thing I wanted to mention, maybe this might be long-winded, but this is also very important. If you struggle with defending as it is, you have to use tactical. In fact, if you're watching this video, you should be using tactical. Because a lot of players, they spam the tackle button way too much, way too much. And if anything, going to advanced defending, you lose that assistance of the game sometimes helping you by forcing you to do a shoulder to shoulder or a seal out instead of a normal tackle. So that's why the assistance is much more important, tactical defending. Once you're like elite level, I would say, then you can change advanced defending, then you can adapt. As I said, most of pro players are still using tactical defending. The prediction I made in the beginning of the game is the same now. So um, that's something, one thing I wanted to say, just give you some clarification because a lot of misinformation and people are misquoting me because apparently I'm saying advanced defending is not good. Of course, if anything, it's better than tactical defending, but you need to know how to defend 
in the first place. Anyway, rant over. Pass block assistance, that's on on. Um, auto switching on air balls on loose, loose balls. When people get come to the game, they think by turning it to automatic, it makes it easier for you. But this is bad because sometimes you might be using your CDM to defend and you'll get the game might control your center back. You don't want the game to randomly switch for you. When you leave this on air balls and loose balls, the game won't switch for you. So you can switch manually. So that way, you, if you run back with your CDM, you're going to keep using that CDM. That way, because if the game switches for you, sometimes you might run out with the wrong play. You might be running out with your CDM. Let's say you're running out with your CDM. Let's say your, your attack is here. This is your back four. And let's say you're running out with your CDM. And the game sign switches you to, switches you to your center back. Then you can leave a massive gap. Or you could run out with your center back line. So with air balls and loose balls, the game only changes when the ball is six feet or higher in the air, like when there's a corner or when there's a cross, it's the best one to use. Um, also switch move assistance, I would recommend low for every single person. This is what you should be using, even if you're new to the game. Um, although maybe before I used to recommend high if you're new to the game, I think realistically you should start on low. Um, this is not beneficial because sometimes you want to have manual control. Like if you, the game switches for you, you want to decide where you want to move yourself. I'd recommend everyone to use this on low. However, if you're a veteran at the game, you sh or if you're an elite player, you should be using none. So if you're new to the game, you use low. If you've experienced with the game, I'll recommend none because that way you have full manual control yourself. Right stick switching, um, to be honest, player rotation is useless. You don't want to use it. It's just not practical. Maybe against squad battles, amateur mode, but that's about it. Um, adaptive. Um, I, I, I just think it takes too long. Classic is just the best one where you just flick your right analog stick. Right uh, right stick switching reference. There is two. Ball relative or player relative. Now, um, ball relative, in my opinion, is a superior one. There's a lot of, again, um, people that are very much unsure of ball relative. You see, even myself, if I was just playing the game normally, and let's say someone said you're on the try ball relative, why would I want to change? Why should you change? I don't blame you. But because it's my job to test the game and teach the game, when the feature came out, I tried out ball relative and I found out that it was more consistent than player relative. Is player relative better? I would say at elite level for high level pressing is the only benefit. I'm talking about like teammate contain, very high level manual pressing. That's the only thing that trumps over ball relative. Apart from that, ball relative is more consistent. It's because your eyes, they naturally track where the ball is going. And remember, if you flick your right, let's say the ball is over there, if you flick your right analog stick up, you're always gonna switch to play on top of the ball. And most of the time when you're defending, let's say for example, the ball is over here, and let's say you've got back line of four, Sometimes you might want to, you might using, let's say using a striker, if you use player relative and you want to switch to your CDM, you might switch to your centre back by mistake and then back to, so you might flip like this, switch to your centre back, then you've got to switch the opposite way, then go back to your CDM to re-correct re the error that happened in the first place. Whereas in ball relative, if you flick it to the right hand, to the left hand side, it's only going to go to the first line of players. If you flick it twice, it will go to the player behind. So in fact, it's more consistent. Player switching is mathematically, statistically more consistent with ball relative than it is with player relative. I would urge you to try it. However, if you are a veteran player and you're used to player relative, there's no need to change it. If you're used to player relative, there's no need. But if you're struggling, I'll def definitely recommend ball relative. Right stick switching sensitivity is a bit of a weird one. To be honest, even after this time, I really don't know what number to use. It's kind of, I feel like it's kind of a bit with delay. You may know what I mean. Sometimes you go inside a game and right stick switching is perfect. You go into the next game, then it's all over the place. I can't really say what's good and what's not. This is one of those few things that it's a lot of trial and error. I would say on the general rule of thumb, um, I think one creator, I forgot who it was, explained it pretty well in the beginning. Um, the lower it is, um, the more manual it is, and the, sorry, the lower it is, the more AI assistance it is, and the higher it is, um, the more manual it is. And what I mean by that is, um, you need more precise right stick switching. Um, I would recommend starting this on five. I'll be honest, I find that seven is kind of, six, seven is kind of the way that I'm going. Um, I think maybe it also depends on whether you use ball relative or play relative, to be completely candid. But again, this one, I can't really give you a suggestion. It does depend person to person. I mean, I got pretty big hands. Like, they're like 22 centimeters, right? And um, whatever. Oh, and uh, another issue that I have as well with, with my hands is that 
my thumb basically is too big for the controller. You, that's how big my hand is relatively compared to the controller. So what I find is that sometimes I'm a bit heavy handed. So that's something just to bear in mind. But again, I would recommend six and just go into a game and adjust it. So if you want to make it a bit more manual, just try going seven and then go to eight and then find out which one you want. Next switch play indicator. Um, this one is actually a really good one. Um, when I mentioned when the game came out, I was using classic. To be honest, I'm using different variations. So this is just for L1 switching, by the way, not right stick switching. Um, Golf side is actually a very good one because when you're defending, it will always choose the player on the golf side, and maybe that can help you to be more defensive, maybe. Um, but however, I use normally closest to the ball. This is really good if you like to press on a high level because... Um, you can press the L1 button very quickly and you can switch to a player that's always going to be closest to the ball. So if you want to press the ball, you'll always choose a player that's closest to the ball. That's the benefit. Now, to be honest, I think Classic does a really good job and maybe because maybe I just don't really like adapting too much to the new ones, I've been using Classic. So um, I'd recommend leaving this on Classic. But I would definitely say do experiment with the other ones. Uh, player Lock, you should leave this one on. That's so you can use a player lock inside the game. People always wonder how you turn it on. Icon switching, I'll leave on off um, with icon switching. Um, I think it's like player rotation. It's a bit pointless because by the time you press the R3 button and then you flick to a player and then you press um, the player you want to select, it just takes too long. The game moves too quickly. As I said, maybe against amateur, amateur mode on kickoff, maybe it might be viable, but definitely not one that I'd recommend. Definitely not online. Um, contextual agile dribbling again this is um, under the reason why it's blanked out because this is a competitive mode setting which is so you can't do that orbit dribbling to be honest i rarely use this um i leave it on anyway but i rarely use this so um unless you i can't think of any because when you're defending you hold the l2 button unless you shield the ball while you're running and you're switching players and you don't want your the game to turn you into an orbit dribbling the animation um, leave this one on, you know, um, unless you, I would say experiment, Thomas, I don't use it, I mean, it should be off for me, but I just leave it on, it doesn't really affect me, goalkeeper on semi, analog sprint, um, the way I always explain this is, you have to use your R2 button to run, think of this R2 button like a gas pedal on your car, so the more you depress it, the faster you would run, so if you push it in all the way like your gas pedal in your car, pedal to the metal, you're gonna do like a kick down in your car, be running at 100% or accelerating at 100% the speed. This is actually good if you want to control the speed of the run and jockey, and maybe if you want to control the speed of your left stick dribbling. However, I would say this is very, pro, this is like almost pro level. I'd, and even then, most of the pros use analog sprint off. I would recommend Nick turning it off. And the reason why I say this is a lot of players, they don't depress the R2 button all the way. So when you're defending, you don't depress the R2 button all the way. And what happens is, is the game slows your running jockey down because it thinks you don't want to be running at full speed. When analog sprint is on off, if you just touch it a little bit, you run 100% of the speed the entire time. So if you press the run button, you're always going to be running at 100% speed. I definitely recommend leaving this on off because apart from, as I said, pro level, you might be one using left stick dribbling and controlling the speed. But to be honest, no one does that anymore. I mean, I used to use analog sprint. I don't even think it's even worth using anymore if you're asking me to be candid with you. Um, trigger effect and vibration, I leave it off because it does distract me. Um, camera, I use co-op. I think co-op um, height 20 zero zoom is the best one to use. So that's co-op camera angle 20 height and zero zoom. Uh, the co-op camera angle is zoomed out, allows you to see most information in the pitch. Um, I don't know, I remember I read, read a thread on Reddit um, that someone said the gameplay feels slower. I mean, uh, that was a bit common sense, really. So, so of course, it's going to be slower because the camera zoomed out. You know, if you zoom, if the camera is like, for example, here tracing the ball and the ball is moving, the camera is going to move so much. But when the camera is zoomed out, it just has to pan ever so slightly. But the main benefit is you can see everything on a pitch. That's why I'd recommend it over telly. It saves you looking at the radar. So although pros may use telly, I'd recommend co-op. And to be honest, most pros even now still use co-op. So um, co-op camera angle, 20 height, zero zoom. I've got a video on camera settings that goes in depth on this. Um, it came out when the game came out. So you can go check that video out. But anyways, that's just the updated um, game settings and um, controller settings. You want to see more 
If it's all like this, don't forget you can jo come join my uh, FIFA school series, FC school, uh, patreon.com forward slash no guys. Links down below in the description. Don't get above the one month where you find your mind. It's no guys guarantee if you want to improve at FC24. Um, and uh, one thing here, I just want to show you very last minute. Um, the reason why, um, so I actually use customized, people always ask me about this. These are the controls I use. When I record a video, these are remapped to classic controls, but these are the controls I use. These are old school ISS controls. I don't think it's PEZ controls. I don't know if PEZ, I think PEZ used R2 to run. This is like international superstar soccer. Like this like back in the day. You're talking about like 1999, 2000. Um, maybe my gray hair might depict how old I am. I'm painting a picture in your head, but yeah, so that is basically it. Um, these are the old school, like X, the tackle button, but I still use this because there's a couple of benefits people don't realize. If you press the tackle button, if you are in possession of the ball, the game actually makes a pass away. So let's say when, when you press the tackle button with circle, sometimes what happens is when you, there's a player next to you, there's a little trick, no guys trick I'll teach you. When the ball is over here, if your tackle button is X, for example, if you press the X button, then sometimes the game might, instead of tackling the ball, passes the ball in your possession, in your favor. So that way you can avoid the rebound and go straight for the counter attack. And there's other benefits why I like to do this as well, because the fake shot, you can do the whir motion with like this. So you can see that square next, I'm gonna move like this. So I can go like this. So like that is how I do the fake shot. So I got like that. And also the right analog stick is closer to the square button. So the tackle button is closer to the right analog stick. And also um, the right analog stick is closer to the square button for shooting. I just think it's more natural. And um, when you're defending, teammate contain, I can use teammate contain and switch the right analog stick very, very, very easy as opposed to using the right analog stick and then using my R1 button to then use teammate contain. So those are just a few things that I want to mention. The only downside of using this control layout is the sprint button, mine's on R1. But because I don't use analog sprint, I don't need to worry, but that's probably the only weakness of using these controls. But I think really it's probably some of the best controls that you can use inside the game. Um, anyway, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. That's just the quick controller settings, um, game settings, and camera angles. And um, that's what I'm using. Of course, you should be using classic, but just in case people always ask me, you know, why do you use these controls? Just that I've been playing the same way for 20 years. Um, so there's no reason for me to change. Anyway, thanks for watching. Take it easy, and I'll catch you next time. Peace out.